Oh, and I'm gonna copy paste this to the intro. This game has spoil. This video has spoilers, so if you don't want the game spoiled, then click off this video now. Seriously, fuck off if you don't want so spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> Hollow Knight. The game that made me rage like there was no tomorrow and that this game would actually kill me. Not only was the base game incredibly difficult to beat, we, w we hadn't suffered enough during the vanilla game, they added four DLCs, which, of course, raged our tolerance meters tenfold. And now we have a huge respect for bugs and the trauma that they go through every day. But this is not an ad for a Bug Lives Matter co commercial. This is not... This is not... This is not a playthrough of the game because I ain't doing that shit again. Uh, this is a tips and trick mode of probably the worst ever game mode ever created in the history of video games, Steel Soul Mode. Yep, that's right. They added a mode where if you die once, you have to start the whole freaking thing over and there's nothing you can do about it once it happens. Meaning, if you die to a stupid thing, you die in real life. Of course, you don't actually die in real life. You just have to start all the way from the beginning. Think about it. You're at the Radiance, then you die, and now you have to do the whole fucking thing over again. Sounds like it could make you angry, doesn't it? Well, it has. It has made many people quit the game for quite a while. Myself included. But, with enough perseverance, I found it can not only be done, it can be beaten 100%, as well as within a day. If you want proof, say no more. Hello. Welcome to the proof section. Achieve 100% game completion and finish the game in Steel Soul Mode. Com achieve 100% game completion and finish the game in under 20 hours. And finish the game in Steel Soul Mode. Yep! I have done all three of those things, and today I'm going to give you tips and tricks on how you can do it too. Yes, you. Someone who likes to play Hollow Knight. Hopefully. No what you do and don't need. This section I like to call do's and don'ts. Do's, get every charm you can. Every charm that will be helpful and non-helpful because each charm counts for 1% of your total completion. The more charms you have, the closer you are to completing this game without having to do any of the hard stuff. That's around 36% of the game completed just by collecting charms and doing platforming sections. Uh, quite a few can be brought from Sly, Salubra, and uh, quite a few can be gained from the DLCs as well. Collect all the charms you can only, and I repeat, only if you think you can handle the platforming sections. Platforming has ended a lot more Steel Soul runs than I'd like to admit. The RNG sucks. <laughs> just, just saying that now. RNG sucks, and we'll get to that in a minute. Steel Soul Jin, a little replacement to someone who summoned our shade in the vanilla game. However, there is no shade in Steel Soul Mode, so instead we have this fecker. This child will give you Geo for rancid eggs. However, some a lot of people say it's not worth it and to not waste your time. Those people can go fuck themselves up the ass, because what I'm going to tell you is do it anytime you have the chance. She will give you upwards of 300 bucks for something she does not claim to want. However, think of Relic Seeker Lim. He will give you 200 G, 200 G, for these things. Something he claims to want. That's right. Steel Soul is giving you upwards of 300 for something she does not want, which is more than something from, which is more than the Wanderer's Journal that you get for Relic Seeker Lin, which he does want. Kind of weird, don't you think? Practice on a non-steel soul save because that may just save your life. Beat the. Beat at least the true ending if you're going for the true ending in this save, because that counts towards an extra percent. Plus, 
if you have a non-steel soul save and beat pretty much every bullshit item that this game can throw at you, you will have more confidence dealing with that BS in the steel soul save. And I say this because it actually helped me a lot. Specifically what helped me was the god home. So if you have that fecker unlocked in this, in a non-steel soul save, go there, practice the shit out of every single living organism within that home. And I, you think I'm joking. I'm not. I really am not. Go to God Home. Practice, 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 practice makes perfect. That's a saying for a reason, because it actually does. Throw in a few radiant challenges in there as well. Not only will that actually give you a lot of bragging rights in your non-steel soul save, but that will give you learning. That will give you a learning experience on control, which you will need a lot of in order to beat Steel Soul Mode and not Shadow Dash into an attack that you could have otherwise avoided. Believe me, that's ended way more runs than I'd like to admit. <sighs> Okay, you remember how I mentioned RNG from earlier? Well, here it comes. Yeah, here is the next tip. Mind the frickin' RNG, because that can fuck you faster than... I don't know, something that fucks fast. This is especially true for dream boss variants, sp specifically frickin' Marmu. She bounces around like she's attached to your nail and physically cannot leave it, and she will mess you up like the happy little doofus you are. She wants to fly? I think she's got that covered. She flies everywhere. Like, she is the shittiest of bulls. Like, if you've ever seen a bull shit, don't be surprised when a marmu comes rolling out of his asshole. Because, uh... Her RNG is bullshit. Just saying. You gotta really know when to hit her and beat her like that. And uh, that alone took five of my health away, but just that, which will get us into our next little tip and trick in just a hot second. But seriously, mind the RNG, that has ended way more runs than I'd like to admit, and it will probably end your run more than a few times. Do not get fucked by it. Do not slack off on any vessel or mask fragments. They will save your life 100% of the time. You would have died, let's say you're fighting the Radiance and you have seven health. If you hadn't picked up one of those masks, you'd die in three hits. But now you'll die in four. Which is better than dying in three. And I know people hate the delicate flower quest, but by some miracle of the radiance, I managed to do it first time, first try in my Steel Soul run. I'm not a hacker, I swear. You know, I just just cut this whole section out. Just cut it. Hi. This is probably one of the most controversial things. I'm going to say involving this game, and that is, if you need essence quickly to get that 2% from the seer, do not b bother with dream bosses unless you know to high heavens that you can beat it. If you can't, just leave it alone and leave it to its dream boss shenanigans. Sequel bosses are where it's at. They give you more essence, and they do not count as a steel soul death. Which can be extremely useful if you're bad. Though, if you've made it this far, I doubt you're bad. If you've made it to the point where you can actually get the dream nail, well then, uh, good for you. I recommend fighting the False Champion, Lost Kin, and Soul Tyrant, because they give you a lot of essence, which will help tremendously. When it comes, not only will that help you when it comes to percentage progression, it will most likely help you when it comes to abilities you can also gain from 
from the seer from collecting essence. It will most likely give you a mask shard. Uh, it will, it will probably give you the dream gate. And we all know how badly everyone wants that, because you can literally just teleport back to anywhere that you want. It might also give you a few vessel fragments or mask shards. And again, I say this with a lot of urgency, do not slack off on those. Like, they will save your life, quite literally, because they give you more of it. They give you more life, therefore they will save it. Like, there's no reason not to get it. Unless you're just that bad at platforming. In that case, uh, we'll move on to our next hint. If you are not comfortable with certain platforming sections like in Crystal Peak, or let's say the White Palace, practice them in a non-steel soul sa save and go into them for real with a little bit more confidence knowing that you have done them before without dying. Also, get rid of the enemies that you can find uh, surrounding the paths. Like, seriously, those guys will end your run like that. Now, I'm just saying this because I care about you. Know the strategy for each enemy and each platform before you go in and do it in Steel Soul. Because platforming has ended more runs than actual boss fights have. Let that sink in for a minute. Go to every mound you can as well. That brings us into our next hint. Welcome to hint number whatever the fuck it is. Um, go to the mounds. Go to every mound possible and uh, get the power that lies within. You will thank yourself for it later. Trust me. There's also a few grubs to be found. And uh, if you rescue grubs, I'm getting a bit sidetracked here. If you rescue grubs, you can uh, get rewards, and rewards are good. Ow. Okay, what just happened will bring us into our next little tip. As you saw, how I expertly got royally fucked over by that parkour section. Um, mind that this game will screw you over in more ways than there are positions on a test board. One of those ways being that if an enemy hits you, or you get hurt for whatever, for whatever reason, and you fall into spikes, that will also hurt you, dealing not one, but two masks of damage. Which is why I truly recommend practicing hard platforming sections before you attempt them in Steel Soul mode. Like, seriously, just, just do it. Like, n come on. Everything in this video is meant to save your life, so listen, please. I beg of you. Really? You're not listening? Okay, have fun dying. Know what does and does not count for your overall percentage of the game. Keep in mind that there is a total of 112% to be gained from this game. Which means you need not complete every single liver flucking thing in this game, in the vanilla game, but you can borrow percentages from somewhere else. For instance, you get a percent from the Grim Troop, you won't have to fight the Colosseum of you won't have to fight the Trial of a Fool. Which is good, because it sucks. I have tried. It took me so long. It took me so long. But however, what happens next is actually too overwhelming to describe. Too underwhelming to describe. So many people think the Pale Lurker is a bitch. Um, she is, because she keeps running away. Sure. But, I never thought of her as hard. Sure, she leaves little spike trails in your wake, but you can literally just shadow dash through the middle. Which is why I recommend getting shadow dash before the Colosseum of Fools. Our next little tidbit is the dash. The shadow dash, I mean. Not only 
Will it make you look cool and enable you to get through barriers? Shade barriers? It took me the longest time to figure that out the first time I played Hollow Knight. But it will enable you to bypass enemy attacks. Of course, you can't just use this aimlessly. Like, it has a cooldown, so mind the cooldown. But it's very useful, so I recommend as soon as you think you can, get the King's Brand from the second Hornet fight, and get Enter the Abyss, and get the Shade Cloak. If you think you can handle it, defeat the Mantis Lords as soon as you can, because when they are defeated, every previously hostile Mantis will become docile. And that's one less enemy you have to worry about. Plus, you'll also gain entrance to a bench and uh, mark a pride and stuff like that. Because, I don't know, apparently if I beat the shit out of their lord, uh, everyone else listens to me. I guess that's good. I mean, if I beat the king, of course the citizens will listen to me. They might even think of me as the new king. Hi. <laughs> However, if you get the Mantis Claw and you're like, eh, I don't think I'm quite ready for the Mantis Lords just yet, well, that's just fine. No one said you had to beat the Mantis Lords as soon as you got the Claw. Just, uh, go on back up and head to the city. That way, you can access the Soul Sanctum and get, wait for it, the Desolate Dive move which will enable you to access more secrets in the Mantis Village and overall fungal wastes. Remember the game layout. See how I don't have the compass equipped? That's because I know the layout so well because I've played it a lot. Okay, I haven't played it that much, but I can recognize the rooms when I see it and I can recognize what's next. I can recognize where shortcuts are, where stag stations are, maybe because there are freaking signs next to the stag stations. Thinking what you should always look for signs, just a little mini tip. What was I saying? Crap. Oh yes, remember the game layout. Because if you accidentally wander into the wrong room, you could find yourself being impaled by the bitch himself, Nosk. I just realized there are glasses on top of the map store. That's adorable. But seriously, if you walk into the wrong room at the wrong time, you will find yourself at the mercy of a... Huh, uh, you probably won't know until it's... Orifice is impaled through yours. And then you'll be regretting, Man, if only I hadn't gone in that room. Believe it or not, that's actually happened before. I ignored the signs and went into a direction I never saw before and uh, ended up impaled by Nosk's blobs of cancer. Or whatever the heck they are. Get every pale ore fragment in the game. I am not kidding about this, because not only will your nail thank you for the extra strength, but so will your steel soul run, because if your nail is stronger than a certain enemy, you might find certain boss battles over in less time than you expected. Which is good, because the less time that the bosses spend alive is less time they can impale your face hole. If you think you are not ready for a battle, don't fight them. Like, seriously. If you're not ready for the Soul Tyrant, then uh, maybe upgrade your nail, peek around for some charms, Go back to Dirtmouth. Okay, that might not be the best idea. Actually, yeah, you can go back to Dirtmouth because there's a frickin' stag station. Just seriously. If you don't think you can fight a boss just yet, there is no shame in putting it off. Seriously, just put it off a little bit longer. Now, I'm a procrastinator, but I get shit done in Hollow Knight. I have one more percent to go to beat this uh, game purely. Again, Seriously, just put off the boss. You don't need to make 100% right away. Who said that? Seriously, you can make 100% anytime you want. Come on, listen to me. Chat, 
Seriously, listen to me. I, 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 I know what I'm talking about. Hi. It is possible to get quite a few mask fragments before you even leave the first area of the game, known as the infected slash forgotten crossroads. How we do this is we rescue every five grubs in the out in this place, and you might be thinking, but CG, that is impossible. You need the double jump to rescue one of the grubs. Well, actually, no, you really don't. Because if you're smart, I honestly don't know where the grub is, so maybe I'm not that smart. <laughs> this is why I'm not doing this in a steel soul safe. <laughs> See, up there. Right up there. That is where the grub is. You down pogo off one of the, the, uh, there's normally just a regular bench fly there, but you can still down pogo off of it and, uh, get here. Ta-da, you got a grub. Collecting five of these grubs will get you a mask shard. There's also a mask shard, uh, there's also a mask shard given by the brooding Molik. Molik, mo 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 how do you pronounce that? But it's probably not a good idea to fight him just yet, so maybe this tip is a bit of a uh, nope. If you think you're badass enough to fight him, go ahead, be my guest, lose your soul save run. Steal save run. <laughs> but um, seriously, I don't recommend doing that just yet. You do not have what it takes. So if you think you can, be my guest, but don't come crying to me when you end up in a game over to a frickin' brooding Malik, or however you pronounce that. Have competence and confidence. Always know where you're going and don't just walk around like you're grocery shopping or something and you just saw a good deal and you're looking for where it is. Because the more you just look around, walking around, uh, making your way downtown, the more likely you are to get absolutely murdered by something stupid. Like platforming, enemies that you just didn't see because you were looking at your map. This is why people have the law that you can't text and drive, stupid. People usually don't like using fragile charms, but in Steel Soul mode that might just be your saving grace. Because their main threat is if they is if you die, they break and they're unusable. Listen, bud, if you die in Steel Soul mode, a broken charm's not the only thing you have to worry about. So freaking use them. If you need an extra two two masks, use Fragile Heart. Like, it won't break. It won't- If you die, you got bigger problems, bro. Like, just- just you, you, There's no question about it. Use Fragile Charms any chance you get. Fragile Strength is probably the best thing you can get from a- In order to beat a boss you do not want to spend a lot of time on. Precept number 70, 70, 70. Uh, buy everything shopkeepers have, unless you know you don't need it or won't need it in a while. Unless it's a charm, in that case, snatch it up like Black Friday. Speaking of which, that's coming up real soon. You wanna, you wanna go shopping? Uh, <laughs> if they have it, take it. Like, there's, if you have it, if you have the geo and they have the materials, then a snatch it. Keep in mind that in Steel Soul Mode, there is a finite amount of rancid eggs you can get. Because uh, your main source is, well, eh, kind of dead. So just, just <laughs> keep that in mind. Like, you don't want to use all of your rancid eggs up at once because you might need Geo sometime and you might not have the materials in order to get it. Uh, cause then, well, you're fucked. Either you're fucked, or you're gonna have to grind quite a bit, which has a chance of ending your run. Know which bosses deal the double damage BS. Bosses like Enraged Guardian and Traitor Lord will absolutely 
to wipe your face on the floor and probably in your run more times than more times than a lot of numbers know that they are indeed the worst and uh can end your run very quickly if you don't know what you're doing keep in mind that keep in mind that a lot of these bosses are easily overthinkable because of the double damage factor and uh really like if you die to these guys it's completely understandable the traitor lord is also took me quite a while to get the strategy down how is it making sound i turned master volume all the way down i know i've already said this before but please and i mean this please practice on a non steel soul save Try saying that five times fast. Um, because it will ultimately make your life a little bit easier. Especially in areas like the White Palace if you're going through the true ending. We all know that we've died at least once to the White Palace's many buzz saws and thorns. Seriously, the Pale King needs better gardeners. But as someone who's beaten both the White Palace and the Path of Pain, you want proof that I've beaten the Path of Pain. You want proof? You need proof? I give proof. I look down here. Seal of binding. See? I have truly and utterly destroyed myself with that thing. But again, please do not attempt the path of pain on steel soul mode. I'm begging you. You will rage if you die. And though each statue has an infinite amount of uh, soul, which means you can heal a lot, not every area has a statue! Be mindful of that! Okay, so I've been talking upwards of 35 minutes and my throat feels like there is a knife poking it. So I am going to end the video here and drink some water. Sincerely hope that you enjoy this video and find these tips useful. Bye bye.